the changes to the agenda. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have four items that sort of came up today. You know, they're percolating for a while. Um, the highway union is asked to reopen the contract. Yeah. That's one. We have an outstanding bill from the village I forgot to deal with on Prospect Street. Uh, a question on COVID time off, paid time off, and Jennifer's probation Great. ending period. Okay, um, over that, um, let's go on to community cha uh, challenge of uh, Lamont County. Hi, um, should I step up there? Can Susan hear me? Um, just bring up the yes. chair if you would, and yeah. just yeah, that that mic mic. Here. I think that'll be great. Perfect. Hello. 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 I don't know your names, if you would. I'm Matt. Matt. Roland. Roland. Chastity. Chastity. And Brian Chackie. Yeah, and we've met, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so I am here to talk to you about the Working Communities Challenge. I did get my second booster yesterday afternoon. So I, I've had so far two long naps today, but if my brain is moving a little slower today, that is why. So um, the Working Communities Challenge grant is a grant out of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. It started, and you, you probably know some of this, it started as the Working Cities Grant across New England until they realized that parts of New England are not cities and they came up with a working communities uh, grant and there's some in Maine, but they started with four in Vermont, which doubled to eight in Vermont. Right now, the working communities challenge grant covers more than 50% of the communities in Vermont. There's one working communities challenge grant for various places covering more than 50%. Ours is Lamoille County. It covers all of Lamoille County. Um, and we are a year and a half into the uh, into a three year grant. So I've been in this job for a year because they took six months to hire somebody. And the grant mostly covers the, the cost of hiring me, but there's other components to it as well. The focus of the grant is to create collaborative work to reduce systemic barriers to employment. So transportation, housing, substance use, communication, the things that keep people out of the economy, workforce development, those kinds of things. Um, our job is to bring together the unusual suspects, get them to the table, people who aren't necessarily always talking to each other, get them to work together to reduce the systemic barriers to employment. Um, and we had a summit last November. You know, you guys, you guys all get my newsletter that comes out, which has been going on now since the pandemic started. It started with the um, incident command and then it moved over into the Working Communities Challenge. We had a summit in November where we invited 100 community leaders came half virtual, half in person. Um, and at the end of that, it was facilitated by Ver uh, Vermont Council on Rural Development. By the end of that, we had chosen three priority areas for the Working Communities Challenge to focus on. Housing, um, a system for access to resources. How do you help people access resources? And partnerships between businesses and service providers. Part of all of those things are racial equity, helping those who are affected by the work be part of the work. So if you're experiencing housing instability, part of the housing conversation. And I don't know how you do any of those things without talking about transportation. I actually don't know how you do anything at all without talking about transportation. Um, I've long said that when any two people in Lamoille County get together, they either talk about housing and transportation or transportation and housing. So that we, we do a whole lot with transportation, even though that wasn't necessarily chosen as an issue because housing is huge and they go hand in hand. We do a lot with transportation as well. So what we do is we bring new partners into spaces they haven't been in before. So for example, we have a housing work group and who's on your housing work group? Well, Lamoille Housing Partners and Lamoille Community House and Clarina Howard Nichols and Lamoille County Mental Health Services. But also the faith groups, they've all focused on housing this year, which is, I don't know if you heard about the um, teach-in we had in the spring that was, it was held at the Jewish community of Greater Stowe, but it was all the faith groups doing a teach-in on housing. 
that came out of our work group. Um, when we're looking, when we're doing Memorial County Field Days, we're, we're hosting a table there that came out of our housing group. The person organizing it is a random community member who went to the town manager of Stowe and said, I want to be involved in housing efforts. He sent her to me and she's now doing all of the, thank heaven, all of the spreadsheets and scheduling and organizing. And I'm just helping her with the information. Um, you probably know um, Reverend Devin. He's a huge part of our work. Um, I basically don't go to housing meetings without him because the more he knows, the more he can accomplish because he has a moral voice, but he doesn't necessarily know the systems that are affecting housing. So that's an example of bringing in unusual suspects. We have, you know, people who have experienced housing insecurity in that group. Um, we have, but we also have the usual suspects there. And part of it is how do you educate people so they understand, so they can be part of it? How do you bring the land trust into a conversation with the faith groups, into a conversation with community members to have those kinds of discussions. Um, and our work is all about collaboration. I like to say that basically I herd cats. I don't really do anything myself. I provide the opportunity for people to do the work. Somebody told me today that basically I'm Tinder. I basically introduce people to each other um, and that's how the work gets done. So, um, well, it's true. Like, like, I mean, so Smugs is now a recovery friendly workplace. How did they do that? I introduced them to Recovery Vermont. They brought them in. Recovery Vermont started doing trainings. Now they've done those trainings for their employees, but they, I also introduced them to Working Fields, which is a staffing agency that helps people in recovery and coming out of incarceration um, have jobs. And it, it, but it works like it's wraparound. It works with your local community service providers. And so they're now signing on with Working Fields. Well, at the same time, I introduced Working Fields to the um, Recovery Center. And so they're signing an MOU to provide those support services. I didn't actually do anything here, but it's providing, I just introduced everybody to everybody and said, you need to know you and, you, and, and that's how we moved it forward. So there's all of these opportunities for collaboration. And you know what has been missing from our groups? We have businesses, we have, faith groups, we have Memorial Economic Development Corporation, we have human services, we have healthcare. We don't have a lot of municipalities, which is why I'm here today. We have Johnson has been a core partner from the beginning, the town of Johnson, and Stowe is a core partner. And that makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, those two municipalities, Johnson is the municipality that most had the need from the very beginning to do this kind of work. And um, Stowe has a lot of people really, really upset about the lack of employees. So I have to say, my phone calls get answered in Stowe like a lot now. Yeah. I talk about employment and everyone's like, I'll talk to you. Um, so what I would like to do is talk to you guys about whether Hyde Park would be interested in joining in the work. There's not a cost. That's always the question municipalities have. There's not a cost associated with being a core partner or being part of a work group. Um, Johnson sends their town manager to our core partner meetings. Stowe sends the town manager's assistant to the core partner meetings because that was work she wanted to do. The core partners meet once a month and they're basically a support in the work. So they, there's really two, there's really three parts. The backbone partners is the United Way of Lamoille County. Technically I'm employed by them. They funnel the money. They provide a lot of support to me. They meet with me and a lot of what we're doing will get handed over to them eventually. And I can give you some examples of that. The core partners are about 30 different organizations, businesses, et cetera, who have come in and said, we're going to support this work. We're going to provide oversight. We're going to provide insight and advice, and we're going to do some of the hard work ourselves for how we do systems change. How do we do things differently. Um, and an example of a core partner who really has nothing to do with the goals of the work is Salvation Farms. They believe in the work. They came in, they send someone to every single core partner meeting. He is a wonderful core partner. He gives great advice. He has great insight. He fully participates. And that's the extent of really what they do with the Working Communities Challenge. And it's great. It's very helpful. Um, we also have work groups and we have a number of work groups, which I wrote all down so I wouldn't forget them. Um, we have a resource team hub, a resource hub team, a finance committee, a housing team, a working bridges team, which is right now dormant because we're doing too many things, recovery friendly workplaces. We're doing um, 
equity trainings for businesses. We have a team that's been working on that. That's about ready to launch. And that's with LEDC, Northern Vermont University, Lara Way, and Donnie Blake. Um, we have, we do not currently have a transportation team. We need a transportation team. We have to talk about 15. We have to have a really good conversation about Route 15. Um, we have a workforce development team, which DJ Massey leads up. Um, and, and we have uh, an equity consultant. So this is the kind of work we're doing and there's space for our core partners to move into that work when they're interested in it. So when I talked to Smugs, they were like, we wanna do everything, put us on all your teams. Um, when I talked to other places, they're not you know, quite that enthusiastic about doing all the things. And some people are on work groups, but not core partners. And some people are core partners, but not on work groups and that works too, because it's about getting as many voices as possible into the work. I can provide you some examples of things we're doing. I'll give you just one example. This is the most exciting one for me um, because it's new. We've recently gotten funding. So I don't, you've probably been on our resource page, the United Way's resource page. It's totally overwhelming. We're completely redoing it. Um, it's about to launch with a search function and m many fewer categories. And you'll be able to take the resources that you want and put them in your shopping basket. So at the end, you have a list of resources so you need the Royal Restorative Center and diapers from the Family Center and you need child care. So the Family Center is going to help you with that as well. Um, and you're looking to get your taxes done. Well, there's a couple of places you can do that and you put it in your basket and then you have those things there. That's great. The virtual resource page is fantastic, but a lot of people have barriers to accessing it. And what I've found is every time I walk into a library, they're all really excited to see me at this point in the county because they have people streaming in their door and they're functioning as navigators and they're using the resource page to help people find what they need, which is great, but they can't always do that work. So one of the things that came out of our summit was that we needed a physical person to help people. So we've just gotten funding for a pilot for a year for a mobile rural resource navigator who will be traveling around to the libraries on a schedule to be available for people to navigate the system. How do I actually get childcare? How do I actually get to the job that I wanna have? How do I figure out how to get WIC? How do I figure out how to get the extra things that you can get with WIC and am I eligible for those things? And what do I do with my senior mother and how do I get eyeglasses for free? So those questions, those kinds of things, how do I get on the housing lists? Am I actually going to get housing from this place or should I just be looking someplace else? Those kinds of questions are too complicated for just go to a website. And that's what a navigator will do for people. So we have a team that's working on beginning that hiring process to hire somebody for that work. Um, and that is very exciting. So that's one example of the many different things that we do and the ways we sort of advance the work. Hello. So questions. What is, what is the eligibility that people have to meet in order to access the services? For the navigator or just in general? Just in general. It depends on, see that's why you need a navigator because it's different for every single thing. So there's certain, there's certain benchmarks that you can hit that the state has for being eligible for this or that program. And a lot of people use those as proxies. Well, if you're eligible for this, you can have this. But you don't necessarily know that if you haven't navigated the system. Yeah. And then there's questions like, how do I keep from falling off the benefits cliff, but get the help that I need? And those and that's really complicated. There's benefits cliff calculators that I still don't understand. And so a navigator is the person who would help with that. When uh, entity that you might want to approach is the Vermont Department of Corrections. Yeah, and we are, we are, they're so we're sort of tangential with them. They get our newsletter. We do some like connection with them. Um, but the restorative center is working very closely with them and they're a big partner of ours. I was down seeing Don just today, but uh, if you went in and you were actually proposed this to the uh, probation officers who are struggling to find those things and lead them in the right direction, um, and then provide brochures or whatever that uh, um, will help navigate that, then uh, uh, I think that'll be a big help to them as well. Would you mind making an introduction? Sure. Thank you.
Mm-hmm. I think it's easy if people make an introduction, people are more willing to talk to me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Okay. Well, my hope is that you guys will consider becoming a core partner, sending a representative to our core partner meetings. Um, it's really important that as we start having these. What's the schedule? Once a month. Once a month, Fridays, 11 to 1230. I've tried to move them. I have tried to move them, but nobody will move them. And they were set before I started. I'm like, who's free 11 to 1230 on a Friday? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you need the representative, and it's virtual. So oh, you log. Really? It's, yeah, oh, it's not. Better. It's not oh, in person. Oh. So you'd be able to come. So if you guys want to like talk about it, think about whether you want to be a core partner. Um, it would be fantastic if you would be interested in in providing that. And then when we're doing things like talking about transportation and housing. You know, I'll, I will make sure you get all of my initiative director reports, and then you have in your packet the initiative director report. You see what's going on, which I think you got in your packet this week, um, and and you just have a sense of what's going on. I don't want to leave Susan out in case she has any questions. No, I'm 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 good, and I'm the same. No, eleven to twelve thirty wouldn't work. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Really glad. There's she's no commitment. About 11, 12, she said it wouldn't work for her. Oh. There's no there's no cost whatsoever. Um, the only cost that may eventually be asked to the municipalities is if some of the projects are looking to find sustainable funding for whatever they're doing, they may approach municipalities, but there are no plans for that right now. And there's no commitment to cost. It's about being committed to trying things a little differently. It's about coming to the table and having these conversations. So. You know, one of the things that I'm bringing to my housing group on Monday, there was a recent article in the Boston Globe that said everyone points their finger at NIMBYism, but the real problem is, and and they went into the real problem being, you know, the approval process, but I'd like to talk to the housing group. Like, we're talking about NIMBYism all the time, but NIMBYism is actually not what's holding up housing in Lamoille County. I, I have a theory on what's holding up housing and it's that we don't have transportation along 15, so you can't put housing in Johnson. Um, I mean, we're extending micro we're, we're replacing the Morrisville loop with microtransit, which will reach into Hyde Park, but that still creates a desert between Hyde Park and Cambridge, right? Like you don't have transportation there, you can't put housing in and that's why we can't have housing. Can't create anything with RCT. So here's the deal with RCT, um, and I for elderly, right? No, no. no. So oh, no. I'm see, I'm glad you asked. So full disclosure, <laughs> I am the vice chair of the RCT board. That's a huge oh. part of the time we're putting into transportation is for me to be helping with that board. Um, currently, we have a temporary director who stepped up valiantly last fall when we needed to to do that, and they're in a hiring process for a permanent director. So it's hard to move things forward right at this moment, but believe me. One of the things I'm doing is trying to bring RCT into more conversations because we have all these conversations about housing and RCT is never there. And why is that happening? Does that make any sense? Yeah. So it's those kinds of things. Yeah. Do you know Richard Cody? I do not. Richard Cody also owns Richard's Body Shop up in, uh, uh, headed out of Morrisville up on Elmore Street. Uh-huh. Yep. And he has a bus limousine type of a business type thing. And he uh, does, he used to do years ago, um, I'm trying to think it was for the mountain company or was it for the old telephone or something, but anyway, he used to take that bus and go back and forth up and down 15 and, uh, um, he might be somebody that you could approach to, uh, uh, see if he'd be willing to, uh, utilize his, uh, bus to, uh, to do that transportation, set up a schedule or something like that. I think he'd be really, uh, you know, responsive to it and, and, uh, trying to meet the needs, I think, if you approach well, does that. And, and Smugs is willing to put some resources into providing transportation up Route 15 for very obvious reasons. Yeah. Uh, well, they, they need the employees and they're a wonderful employer. Like I want yeah. people to work for Smugs. They're a really good employer, yeah. but they can't get people there. So that's a really good conversation. Would you mind making an introduction? <laughs> <laughs> Richard Cody, it's in the telephone book. <laughs> no, no, I don't even have Richard's phone number. On here, we can write that down. Uh, whoops, battery low. No I'm not so sure that Richard's still. Um, you have my email address, so you can just send it to me. He's aged, I think he's aged out. 
Yeah. But it's that kind of like innovative thinking that we need yeah. people. That's why I need the core partners because every Different ideas. Thank you. People. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I assume you're going to want to have a discussion at a later board meeting about this. That's usually how this works. But I, I am available with any questions you have um, and excited to have had a chance to talk to you. Is the meeting a specific Friday of the month? Yeah, it's whatever this one is, which is third. No, right? Second? No. Uh, Here, let me look. Sorry, third. like I said. Only because the first was on this Friday, this so it would be the third. Because there's five 15, Fridays in July, yeah. right so it might not be a good month. To, it's yeah. probably the third, though. It is the third Friday. Okay. Yeah, like I said, my brain's a little fuzzy. Yeah, today. <laughs> And it's usually a pretty good meeting. Like, you know, we're talking, we're, this week's mostly budget um, because we have to do reporting, but we're also going to talk about, for example, um, results based accountability training, which is, you need, there's only one facilitator in the state of Vermont who does results based accountability um, facilitation, which means helping people pick what's the data you're going to look at to see if you're making a difference. There's only one person in Vermont. So we're looking at putting funding towards me and Greg Stefanski doing that training. So there's two people available to do that work in Lamoille County. Thank you for all of our various partners. So there's people who know how to do it. Okay. Well, thank you very thank much. You okay. Thank you very much. That was a great meeting. Yes. Thank you. I will let you get on with your meeting Perfect. and I'll look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Okay. Have a good evening. You too. Bye. 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 Okay, good to see you. Oh my goodness. Oh, boring. Oh, it's going to be a big rainbow. Boring. Sunshine, look, look too. for the rainbow. Uh, just get back. Can we on. help you? <laughs> I'm with, from the Development Review Board. Oh. You guys do what you're doing. <laughs> unless you're done. <laughs> okay, so approval of the minutes. I believe that's the next thing. Yeah. For 628 and 75. They look good to me, Ron. You do a good job. <laughs> Since we still Thank haven't you. found anybody to help you I do know. it. It's a permanent posting on the website. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I will move to approve the minutes of the 28th and the 5th. Second. All those in favor, so you can by saying aye. 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 You may close. I have to abstain. Yeah. Yep. You didn't look at them? I wasn't here. Oh. I was here at Susan. Yeah. I missed oh, a lot. I can't hear Susan. Yeah. There she is. I accept them. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And the update on the regional assessor. Brian, <laughs> we just attended that meeting. I know. Wait, what um, about, are we going to do the warrants? These right here? Oh, okay. Yep. Well, wait, I'll do them at the end. <laughs> so we can look them through, whatever. We're I already looked at them on, online. Online, online. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the regional assessor is, as we've talked about in the past, is somebody that's going to do all of our uh, uh, assessing of uh, uh, housing and Hyde Park, that type of thing. And this person is going to be a shared position. And uh, um, we got to find the right person. Uh, what's the lady that's supposed to be helping with the- Terry Savings. Yeah, Ms. Savings. Supposed to help us possibly with that. We met with LCPC. That's what the meeting I was participating in when you guys came in. And uh, it was um, discussing if LCPC will uh, um, do the administration type work for the position. And uh, they indicated that they would bring it to their the rest of their board and look at it. And I got the impression that they were kind of favorable on the idea because they kind of do that anyways, uh, working with the community. They had set up or discussed of maybe a parameter of only working with uh, people, uh, towns in Hyde and the whole county. And uh, um, I think it's good to have somebody that if we're going to do your assessing, you, you kind of like it to be somebody local type of thing. It give you a better feeling, I think, with, uh, um, with the project, that type of thing. So, um, and the board's going to meet in October. 
they will meet with the full board, yeah. which is all the towns instead of just today's was executive session yeah. or executive committee. Yeah. The full board is up next to see if they concur. And then they take August off oh. from everything. Mm -hmm. And then by then, when they come back in September, we'll have documents and le not legal stuff, but just documents and how it's going to work and maybe some costs mm -hmm. and also work with the other towns that want to sign in. So we have more commitment. Yeah, and we'll, uh, Wolcott's we'll another one that's showing interest. Um, been talking about um, Elmore, um, Johnson. Johnson currently has two, but they're. No, they have no, they no. disbanded. They oh, had okay. a vote in Hyde Park to yeah. dissolve, and that failed. Johnson did it two years ago, maybe. Yeah. So they've been contracting since then. Oh. Yeah. And we're contracting because we don't have a board. Yeah. The article will be back again, you know, every year until people feel like it's time for that change mm -hmm. or they step forward and we have a board of listers again right. even with a board of listers we probably still have to have this contracted service because the technology you know the technical skills are high enough that yeah you'd have yeah. to either have a former lister on the board or train somebody to be the basic lister but you still need the upper level person to push all the buttons the right way yeah, yeah. So and good luck with that four different levels yeah. of uh of certification, you know, yep. certification for it. So, uh, um, and what we would be looking at right now would be like maybe a level two, and they'd be uh, um, assisted uh, by Miss Saban, correct? Yeah, yeah. And we've been doing it for quite a few years, and help with that. And uh, uh, price tag for that has been thrown out there. Now, remember, it's going to be shared by all the uh, different interested uh um towns and it's between what 30 and 35 dollars an hour and then there would be a benefit package on top of that to make it like a full-time position to attract uh, uh an individual to, to do the work so from what i've seen and what i've heard it sounds like it'd be a pretty good deal i don't know if the um uh, monetary amount is quite enough for the, to this day and age but uh uh, it's a starting point, so uh, to get us get us rolling in the right direction, I think. I uh, uh, support the effort so far. Uh, everything seems like it'd be favorable for for everybody. Um, so we'll have to kind of keep get, uh, getting reports on it. Now, when do we start where we go with like a job description that's shared with everybody right everybody's okay with yeah their it. supervisor would be like the representatives of the town because regional planning doesn't want to take that much of an ownership yeah. they want yeah. to do sort of the administrative paperwork benefits payroll reporting that kind of stuff. the committee of towns or whatever you want to call it will be the ones that uh, have to approve the job description I, and regional planning has to worry about um, some statutory requirements for advertising jobs and things so that they'll set that framework up so we check all those boxes for them, but the committee would do the work. So the towns would do something together as that job description. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. They would, they would push it up to regional plan. Then regional plan would they accept would take it, it from there. And, got it. Yeah. And it's pretty much, a, it is it's kind of a statutory thing. So it's almost like a task list to comply with state law. Yeah. That's about as short as you really could make it. Yeah. But then each town may say, you know, we want you in the office from noon to three exactly. on Wednesday. Right. The rest of it can be remote, but we need to have a face down here, that kind of thing. Yeah. Which is what Julie did here. Yeah. I think she was here for four hours or something. But no. You didn't answer any questions people have that type of thing. Yeah, just give an yeah. opportunity for that. So, but that's the tweak that each town would do. Gotcha. Ter yeah. Terry gotcha. was comfortable in saying a lot of stuff is remote. But there's still pipe paperwork to push and file yeah. and do all that kind of stuff. So I don't think it's not realistic to be 100% remote. Right. Yeah. So more to come. I think that's Tasha will work with the towns and then the select boards have to make some commitments because this is a real thing. You can engage an employee, you engage in regional planning. You're not going to be able to come and go because the board changes their mind. Or, but you can always do that. But it's not intended to be flexible. It's like, okay, this is a real position. Let's make it happen and be committed for at least a year. If it really doesn't work out, a town could leave with six months of notice. That's what the that's what the regional planning commission is asking. Yeah. So, Ron. Yeah. Yes. Um, or or Brian, whoever knows the answer. How much money do we currently have put aside? Do we spend on with our contract? 
discuss what we're looking at. Well, our con yeah, the contract was over. We were we were watching the um, full one year cost for Nemric because they started right. last July one, and I think they just invoiced us the last bill, and that was kind of on the larger side. So I'm thinking there's a range of fifteen to twenty thousand as what we're going to be committed to for this position. Uh, what's okay, so. What's yeah. in the budget is another question. We had probably twelve or thirteen thousand in the budget last year, so we're on the light side, if you will. So when we look at the when we look at this new arrangement, we're not starting it until October. So I think the money for FY twenty three will be there. When you do your twenty four budget coming up in a couple of months you'll have better numbers to put in that budget for the full 12 month period. Okay. Many Thanks. Do you need during the week or what was uh, five to eight, eight, five to eight hours a week is what we were thinking. Same with Johnson, less for Wolka, less for Elmore. Yeah. yeah. But we want to get it. And Verdens has expressed interest. They could help us get to the 40 if there's yeah. no other towns, yeah. even though the board may not Virginia. like that. It's, Virgins? Virgins is desperate as well, and they can't find anybody down that area. So what about Eden? No, this I think that's what the board the executive board said that. They said mm -hmm. once this becomes real and yeah. we have some things look, there may be other towns that are yeah. I think, yeah. in the county. Very, yeah. very popular. Yeah. So that's when you come the norm of it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the best benefit for having the regional planning do the wages and the salary is that that's a stable, I think one of the board members called it the hub. And then towns could sort of come and go in that six month constraint. You know, they could try it for their two hours a week, get out at six months and, and have those kind of things coming in and out. Yeah. So I, I think that flexibility for towns, just like if we had that for animal control. You know, right. Where can we can we give somebody five hours a week for animal control? Yeah. Oh yeah, the regional planning has that. So we'll do five, somebody else. Do. So sure. otherwise we have to hire somebody and try to coordinate with Eden or Johnson independently and sometimes yeah. that, that can work, but it, it hasn't worked. <laughs> so at uh, 15,000, that gives us about uh, a little over eight hours uh, each week at $35 an hour. So we're in that ballpark yeah. already. Yeah. So it isn't as we were drawing anything. Yeah, it's not, it's not a huge leap on the dollar side, yeah. but it is a statutory mandate. That's mm -hmm. what I said right. at the meeting. It's like, you have to do this stuff or else the state's gonna find you or penalize you for coming in and do it for you. Yeah. I, right. heard, I haven't heard of the what if yet. But. Yeah, we might not want to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not going to be $39 an hour. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, so that's that. That's the short story. I think each, maybe not on the 26th, which is your next meeting, but probably in August, we'll have a little more paper to look at. Yeah. Working with regional planning. Cool. We'll keep that. In your mind. Okay, so next thing was what? Update on regional municipal. No, no, that's not it. Uh, repair, baseball, basement. basement repairs, I mean, and then Beth uh, Bailey driveway. And so, basement, it's here. You see the basement? Yes. Um, so, we're waiting for the fire marshal to do inspection on final wiring so that we can figure out where to put the walls back and the ceiling back. Once that inspection's done, they do a cursory inspection. They'll say this has to move this way, that has to, and then all that stuff will be on the walls. Um, Mark Alexander will come in and make those final adjustments. Then we have to find the drywall and some. There's some lumbering stuff that has to be put back up. Uh, they put one of the the clean out for the sewer under where Kim used to store things in the corner. Hmm. So we probably have to take out half of her shelving in that corner. Which is about three or four, yeah, three or four feet to make sure yeah. we have access to that. But she can store stuff on it. It just there was a full shelving unit on top of that area before. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was quite the destruction. I think we're some of this stuff uh, had Matt Reed down here looking at some of the documents you see rolled up. Some of those are just duplicates and old drafts and things that just nobody knew what to do with. Hmm. So we're going to take our time and go through those and anything that's just totally worth less, we'll get rid of those. Things that have value or potentially like unrecorded surveys are also in there. So we have to scoop those up and get them 
either cataloged in that room or upstairs in the vault, one or the other. The rest of it is all Kim stuff. Probably three quarters of that is all just election stuff and uh, treasurer finance documents from the last seven years. Uh, we have to keep records for seven years, so that's our that's the, that's the town's activity over seven years, pretty much in front of you. So Kim has an election on August nine, I think. So that's our goal to get this room cleared out. Yeah. Not saying the bathroom will be done. So whether she needs a bathroom for the election or people can go upstairs is a question. Whether you want a portal let out here for that for the day or just have people go up the stairs. Yeah, have to be accessible. Yeah, so right. they'd have to go outside and take their car up to the upper level to go to the bathroom because they won't be able to do. Or get a handicap accessible, or, or get a large. Yeah. yeah, just for the day. That that's the site. It's a, it's an issue, but we have to. Yeah. We can do that pretty quickly if we need to. Eddie Fredericks did a really good job of uh, organizing and getting everything done here. Roland contacted him, but uh, uh, did an exceptional job of getting everything. Uh, done in a timely manner and, and a lot of long hours and devotion towards uh, uh, getting the place so uh, we can use it and uh, also the uh, town crew came in and uh, did all the excavating and stuff so that saved us some money as far as uh, doing that work and they did the landscaping out here um, so uh, um, yeah it all come out good it came together um, that's the reason why I was reaching out to everybody trying to get the okay to, to go ahead with this stuff because it was somewhat of an emergency to try to, we needed three, three board members to at least approve the work to get going and, and uh, we got hold of Susan and Roland even had a hard time getting hold of me at first, but, uh, um, I was on a boat in Maine. <laughs> I usually, I usually screen his calls anyways, but mm. I, uh, no. <laughs> So, uh, anyways, um, I think of anything else that we, and of course, when you went into this room right here in front of us, um, the water came right in underneath the electrical pan. Of course it did. And so Eddie took that and moved the plumbing over into the other room, the uh, storage tank and all everything else, and he got it all over there and uh, did it really well. And uh, we uh, put, um, we uh, redid some of the water going out through. Now we have a shut off. We didn't have a shut off. So we did, you can imagine. Well, well, we did, but we had to kill we shut the whole out. other house development down. Yeah. yeah. So, and the town garage. And outside mm -hmm. shut off. Your uh, curb stop. Yeah, yeah, curb stop. We put in the tried out gear now. And yeah, that was the thing that came out. Yeah. So, we I routed. Took, I took pictures. I suggested going out that wall. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, out that. Okay, so we'll go on to Beth Bailey's driveway. Um, Mark has been on vacation or been mm -hmm. away, so he hasn't a chance to do anything uh, with that thus far, but uh, it's on his list of things to do. And we'll figure that out. We're getting some more uh, pricing for paving that uh, uh, entryway into uh, her driveway there. So, I don't know. Should have Mark, talked to Mark today, but I think that um, maybe you ought to call Kevin Slate. I mentioned that to him. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Kevin's pretty local around here, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to have somebody local to be the price for me. Beth said she wasn't in a hurry anyway. I mean, she. Yeah. So that's Beth. Um, let's see. Uh, the land acquisition, um, nothing new on that, right? Uh, yeah, so those two possible execs on the board, I do need an session something? on those. Um, and if you want to invite Mac uh, from the DRB, he's here for the Morsel Sand and Gravel Appeal. Okay. To get some background from what the DRB Good. process was. Uh, so the things that I added earlier. Yeah, we can uh, do those. The uh, highway uh, union contract. They've uh, asked to reopen the contract for, uh, uh, I guess it's money they're looking for. Wages only. Wages only. Um, not sure what promoted that or anything like that, but um, anyways, but uh, 
Um, I know that there's other stuff that's coming up and needs to be negotiated. Um, I did uh, have uh, lunch with Roger Marco, and Roger is looking for an increase in his uh, uh, budget too to help uh, main, um, recruit and keep uh, uh, officers over there and staff. And so I don't know what the budget uh, uh, affords, but uh, I, I do think it, uh, some of those things probably should be addressed um, as well in there. Well, the advice on the risk, so we have to respond to the request. The re options are, no, we're good with the current contract. Thank you. We're not going to have a special meeting. On the reverse side, you can say, sure, if you guys want to meet, we'll set, set up a meeting and we'll sit with you for a little while and see what your point is or what your request is. The advice from the attorney on all this stuff, because we're in an active contract, is really just to listen to that first meeting and see what the request is. Do not talk about any other conditions or benefits or any of that, and then then go by yourselves and think about what the response really would be on a yes or no to reopen the wage and then start debating it. But, so it's not a t it's not a request from the town to the union. It's the union saying, "Hey, we have some issues with wages in our contract. Can we talk about that before the next round, which is in about a year and a half or so? We'd have to talk about that." Mm -hmm. So. Oh, it's a two year contract. It was a three year a three contract. Year contract. Yeah. I thought it was something about four. The fourth was just for wages. Just for wages. Okay. Yeah. So they're kind of pushing that forward. So they actually got a four year contract. Yeah. Oh. On the term, on all the terms. And the wage in the fourth is the wage reopener to get right. to the fourth. Got it. So we'd have to meet anyway to get to the fourth. Right. But everything else would be off the table. This one, they're pushing it forward to, oh, it's really just July. So it's really a, two-year reopener, I guess, instead of a four-year reopener. So if you want to, I would respond to the union and say, hey, yeah, sure, come on in. We're going to we're gonna be here on the 26th if you guys want to talk about it and come right, in. Right. We can do a 5.30 or a 6.30 or end a meeting. Or Well, the guys are usually done at four now on their crew. So I don't know if you want to do something midday or closer to six and have them come back at 5.30 just to listen to them for 15 or 20 minutes before your six o'clock, something like that, I don't know. I would entertain 5.30. Yeah, I could do 5.30. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just, I'll email Tim at the uh, local 300 and say, if you guys want to chat, we're willing to listen at 5.30 on 26. Okay, and the bill for the Prospect Street? Yeah, so that, and it's not dated or anything, but it's related to that prospect repaving project where the the village had to uh, or felt they needed to. I don't know if things were damaged or if this was just aging parts and pieces. They replaced risers on Prospect Street during the paving project, so they didn't do it ahead of time, but they did it during the paving project and charged four thousand. Uh, one hundred and thirteen dollars and ninety nine. Ninety nine. I don't. I've only seen this already <laughs> once. Yeah, you saw it once, and it was set aside without any real board decision on it. So it, you didn't really know where it came from. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not itemized. It was just. And this wasn't scheduled, right? I mean, it wasn't made aware to us that it was going to happen. Right at the end of that event, <laughs> the village told Mark French, "You probably get a bill for that extra work we had to do." during your paving project. So that's what that is. We didn't, it, it, bothers, it bothers me a little bit because it's not itemized. So I can't even, I don't even know what was done. I can, you know, you can't they, resubmit it, it wasn't, it, send it back to them. That, like, that we can continue the discussion yeah. and say, look, uh, can you itemize this for us so we can even think, I, I, it's usually done by the water company. <laughs> you know, it's part of the water bills and they, they do their maintenance on the risers. That's what they, that's part of that water right. system charge. Yeah. For them to charge us for lifting sewer, or lifting water mains, and doing those measures. How about drainage? We cover the drainage, right? Yeah, we do all stormwater drainage, but this is right. in the in the road. Right. So that's what I'm saying. That unless unless this would, they had it at a riser or something to the drainage. Well, we don't know. But we don't when know. You, when you raise, <laughs> yeah, when you raise the road, if you just raise their manhole. Purely, yeah. I mean, if, I don't like I said I, if it was decrepit stuff that needs to be replaced and it was timely that they right. do it before right. 10, 
we shouldn't have gotten a bill for that. Right. If we told them you need to raise that by six inches because we're changing the road, right. that's a different type of thing. And it wasn't like that. This is a pure this is a maintenance thing where they ground the road down and put the pavement back. And I think they just looked around and saw risers that were needing to be repaired and build less water. I think that's what happened. It's <laughs> just the water department. Yeah. Send it down to me. Please. Sure. Please. So anyway, I, was just, I, I remember it. I was just saying, yeah, I think this go back. With a, with a request? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, especially the material, 3900 if, if you're talking a paving riser, those are $150 a piece all day long. So I'll just ask for an advice list and we'll go from there. Okay. At least yeah. it's a response. I didn't have a response before, so I wanted to make sure we didn't ignore that. <laughs> crazy yeah yeah oh this is susan all i'd say is i still have the same response i had to the first time we had the bill <laughs> we set it aside last time right yeah or send it back with nothing they didn't tell us anything but you know say here could you itemize this yeah you're right i agree with you yeah, yeah. Okay, COVID time off. In the during the pandemic, uh, the board had an open um, policy, I guess, of extending or adding on paid COVID leave, whether, whether you were a positive employee test or whether you were close contact. So that sort of is transitioned out of our daily lives a little bit. This is the first time since the been a discontinuance of the emergency was last June, I think, or whatever, right? So something happened over the last Seven year, which it really wasn't reports. employees reporting, yeah. I have a positive, I got to stay out of my workplace until one happened last couple of weeks. Um, so the question was, what is the policy going to be going forward? COVID is not over, it comes and goes. Do you want to have everybody switch over to ETO only? Do you want to and some companies provide five COVID days a year to help for that one chance that they might get infected, but you don't get paid for the uh, isolating because you were close contact, only if you have a positive test. So those are the kind of things I've seen people doing now or companies doing now is that variation. It's it, no, I don't think anybody's doing the close contact. Yeah. We'll pay you to stay home for five days thing anymore. I think that's because well, you don't even really have to do that anymore. It's done. If yeah. you're a close contact, I think you you, you have it, to watch out for symptoms. Yeah, yeah, you can still kind of go about your way. Yeah. So wear a mask. So I don't know. I, I have no. I don't. I, we need to answer if there's a 40 hour request if somebody was out with a positive for five days. Oh wow. Well. So that is pending upstairs in Jen's desk for payroll tomorrow. Did we take it? We didn't take it off the table that we weren't paying it. No, this so is the first time that you have to make a decision on whether. And what the parameters, if you do allow, will be? Is it only employees that test positive, for, and then max of five days, which is still a, kind of a, a recommended period of time to stay away from other people while you're positive and showing symptoms? You have to be showing symptoms even if you have a positive because there's false positives out there. I don't know. Right? All sorts of little. And you can start. People can start taking advantage of it. My my personal opinion. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that they get sick days. That's what we do at our work. Get five, six days, whether it's COVID or whether it's your arm broke. Whoever, you get an extra five for the other. We, we don't have sick days. We merge it under one ETO for vacation and sick. So COVID was held out as a separate. Because we paid them for their COVID. Yeah, that was a separate leave yeah, benefit. That was a separate thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So now we're, instead of having that unlimited, which we did during the pandemic, I'm bringing that back to something else, which if you had a five day max per six months or per, 12 months that would limit the risk of people using it and you know, abusing I, it. I, I think there could be a different thing about that. I mean, I don't know. That is a hard gray so area. My yeah. company gave me, we had unlimited COVID time during the brunt of the pandemic. And then they took it, took it away per se when all the orders were released. But they left, they did leave us with three days that, and they just added it to our so wellness time what, is what they called it. It's not called COVID anymore. It's called wellness time. 
once day. you're exposed to it or you got it or you're supposed to do five days, right? Well, no, no. I think that that's changed now. I think well, if you're I know, exposed, I know somebody that just went through that. It's two negative tests. It's two negative tests. Are you sure? I thought it changed and you didn't have to. I, I, I'm just thinking what I'm thinking out loud is if they had two tests, two negative tests, but if they had one negative test, one positive test, I still think that we ought to pay our employees. You know what I mean? If they tested positive, yeah, I think the town, sh I, I myself would try to see them get paid. But if they do two negatives test and it has to be done for the hospital, it has to be, you know, not at home. Right, the PCR. So not that I wouldn't say that I wouldn't trust anybody. No, but no, it's I fair just, to ask. I, yeah. I'm just saying that, you know, this it's still going around. Right. It's still going around. I know. So that's you're, saying, you're saying in order to get paid, you have to have a doctor's note, a doctor's saying that these excuse such and such for five days or whatever. I mean, it's not their I mean, fault they get it. And I don't want to, you know, the way things are now, the freaking price of everything has gone sky high. They just, you know, why should they have to use their personal vacation time when it's, you know. <laughs> How much time do you get a year? Uh, for ETO, it depends on years of service. So you can yeah. start at 150 hours for new employees. And the chances are 150 hours. So it's vacation and weeks. weeks. Vacation in ETO. Yeah. Chances of getting sick tiger, you know, a lot tighter now than they were in six months. Ago. That's absolutely correct, right? But I still think we ought to, you know, at least think about it and try to help them out somewhat. I mean, it's not no fun if you got it because I know somebody that just went through it and yeah, they struggled. Still getting sick. They, yeah. they struggled yes. pretty much. And had their shots, had their vaccination, both vaccination shots, and wears a mask a lot. How many how many days do you get at your employment? Huh? How many days do you get at your employment? Yeah. yeah, you've heard that. No, I haven't. No, how many? No, what do you get? What's your company pay? What's my company pay? Yeah, I don't know. I've never. I haven't been there yet. I mean, you, you have like your vacation or like your. You're, you're part time now, yeah. so you might not. Yeah. Do you okay. consider part time really? Yeah. It's a yeah. state. It's a state law that to, to, you're required to pay five sick days now, right? Correct. Pay for eighteen hours or more per week for those people. Yeah. Oh, maybe we split it with them or something. Right. Yeah. Well, like I said, you, you can have a max. You know, we're, we're going to have you use ETO, except that every year you have up to five with a doctor positive report or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Some combination of things like that. So it's just, you're doing something, but ETO it's is not... related. Yeah, I mean, ETO is not insignificant. But if somebody really got sick, there it's almost like an injury too, you know. So that's what they'd have to use if they got injured. Temporary is ETO, yeah. Over eight days, we have short-term disability. Right. They really get bad, so they get sixty percent back on that. So they only use forty percent of their ETO to make up if they want to keep one hundred percent. Right. We, can, this, we can try it out. I mean, it's, it's one of those things we're going to adjust potentially. Yeah. But we just been been remiss, I guess, in not talking about what's happened in the last six months, let's say, yeah. because things have changed enough. But with this one request, they were going off the old policy. Right. And if you want to change it tonight, probably use the old policy for this one going for sure. forward, have the new policy kick yeah. in, which is... That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I think it's only fair we have to, to have use a max the old policy for the Because it wasn't a set policy, and now we've established one. Right, going forward. Yeah. Well, we had a set one, so they kind of have to use that. Yeah. Send the bill, Jeff, in. Right. <laughs> China. China, whatever. They send it to the bank of China. Yeah. I think we ought to try to do something. Maybe we just wait until it happens. If it does. Or not, never. Well, 
if you're going to pay the current under the old policy, I'll write something up for the new one so you can actually see it in writing for yeah. the next meeting. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. What's the current policy? Five days? Well, it's unlimited now. It's unlimited. The recommendation was to stay home for five days when you have a positive. Yeah. We kind of got off the, the, the... Yeah, well, we got off the um, close contact thing. I, nobody's been reporting that. This is the first person that had the positive. It was an employee. Right. So that's a, that was the elevated risk. So they use the old policy, which is fine because that's all we had. But we can cap it going forward from the 26th, so to speak. And yeah. Yeah. We'll think of something here. All right. Well, I'll, 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 I'll put something in the next packet to look at. I'm fine. Like she's got three wellness days. I would be as simple as something like that. I don't think we could open that. I mean, if they got, if they're getting three and a half or four weeks of vacation or ETO time, they should also be able to use some of theirs. You know, yeah. like it's a sport. Well, I do too. Uh, yeah. I'm not in town. I'm indifferent here, you know, like I yeah. do. Yeah. Sure, you know. Well, yeah. at least we're doing something. Yeah. Right. I mean, 160 hours, four weeks of vacation for right. most employees, that's a lot of anyways. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. I'd be fair. They'd, I'm sure they'd be happy with that. <laughs> I just hope no one gets it. <laughs> Let's just go with that. That Susan the key thing is just the uh, documentation. I hear nothing yes. from Susan. I agree. Oh, hey, yeah. No, I. I think mostly what we need to do is have a written policy because then your staff knows what to expect. Yeah. yeah. At least we do something, Susan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I think you should do something because it's um. Yeah. There's still a lot of it around. You're right, Rolly. There are a lot of people still getting sick. I know there is. It's close. Okay. So Jennifer's probation period is ended. Yes. So we have a um, recommendation somewhere of uh, successful completion. I've had a long talk with her today about goals and things that she wants to get done and she's feeling good in the position even though she has a bunch of that baggage, if you will, from the last year and a half or so of the transition. So she's totally aware of that. Uh, she's asked for extra help with uh, Sarah Macy, who's works for the region of Vermont, Leo City's town. So there's a couple of things all rolled together with trying to figure out what her needs are to be successful, basically. Yeah. So that's what we, that was our conversation today. So those are all positive, um, but we do need to have a um, probably a quick executive session on some pay items, I guess, yeah. about her um, end of probation. Okay. okay. So I'll add that in with the other two with if you want to transition that to. Um, Back so he can go home and get some dinner. Right. You need a motion to move into executive session? I will make I'll that move. motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we're going into executive session. All right.